So, uh, one of the best parts about my role within the Alumni Society Board's Alumni Engagement Committee is getting to contact the award winners and let them know about their selection. It's always one of the most fun phone calls you're going to make. The Alumni Society Board solicits nominations for our awards all year round, and then we meet to review those nominations and really select the best of the best. When I contacted our next winner, I happened to catch her on the phone while she was driving home on what happened to be the day before her retirement. So I would like to see the PA media group top that as a farewell surprise. In a journalism career that has spanned print, computer, all digital news products, as well as a Penn State master's degree in American studies, Kate Barron's focus has remained on telling stories that would impact readers, benefit communities, and right wrongs. Her commitment to informing and bettering the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania makes her a no-brainer selection for this year's Douglas A. Anderson Communications Contributor Award. The Anderson Award is presented to acknowledge the contributions and or achievements of an individual in the field of communications as they relate to the Belisario College, Penn State, and or the Commonwealth. After nearly four decades with the Patriot News, Patriot News, Penn Live, and the PA Media Group, ultimately rising to the position of president, Kate has expertly reflected that. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Barron. to be here today um, and what an honor to get an award named for Doug Anderson <laughs> I love that man and he truly is a legend and the person who I think really turned this journalism school into the national powerhouse that it is and how delightful to be sitting beside Marie who furnished that legend who burnished that school and grew it into the the best in the country in my opinion um, I'm privileged to consider both people colleagues and friends that goes for a lot of past and present faculty at Penn State, and some of you are in the room. I'm looking at Fort Risley. Uh, Mila, we just made friends of uh, last night, and I'm really looking forward to getting to know you better. Uh, John Dillon, Russ Eshelman. My gosh, the list goes on and on, including folks up at Middletown where I did my master's. Uh, we've had warm relationships. We've worked together for many years uh, through student recruiting, through seminars, through joint reporting projects that we've done together. Uh, visiting classroom speakers, and most recently, news literacy efforts. It's vitally important for academia and the work world to maintain these close ties. Vital. They inform each other, they keep each other current, as we're in the middle of an industry that is changing by the nanosecond. Uh, I've been out now for a couple months, and I'm sure I'd have to do a lot of catching up to go back in. But what remains constant is a shared dedication to nurturing talent. Uh, the journalists produce at the Belisario fuel newsrooms across the country. During my career, I've worked by many people who spent a lot of time in Carnegie and at the Collegian, and every one of them, I can say, had a passion for reporting grounded in fairness and accuracy, storytelling, immense drive, and fearlessness. And we need all kinds of journalists these days. Uh, yes, we need videographers and podcasters. We need social media influencers. We need trend spotters. I'm sure you all saw the story about the uh, Gannett position that's open for a Taylor Swift and Beyonce writer. <laughs> that's okay. Um, but, 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 we especially need reporters and editors who are deeply committed to investigative and watchdog work. I can't say that strongly enough. This is the journalism that's established us as trusted sources for news and information. This is our work at its most powerful. That's why a lot of us got into the business to begin with. Abandon that mission and risk losing all relevancy. Uh, these are perilous times for the media. I don't have to tell you that. It's, it's been uh, something we've been broadcasting for years and years. We've been hobbled by a broken business model. Papers are closing at a horrific rate. Last week, you might have seen the news from the Post. They're doing buyouts again. Uh, and we are under siege from the true purveyors of fake news. Our industry's basic survival tool, tool is doing high impact essential journalism that matters. I'm Barry Nalito, really. What I really want to talk about today from my heart is uh, honoring you all for this award. I'll explain why. This award speaks to the integrity and character 
of Penn State University, of the Alumni Society, and the Belisario. Yes, Penn Live, the Patriot News, has done a lot of reporting on good news out of Happy Valley. The research accomplishments, the incredible athletic endeavors, and of course, Bond. But I come from a newsroom that many of you know has cast an extremely harsh light on this institution over the years. That's even meant taking Penn State to court. This university was notoriously secretive when it came to sharing its finances. That included administrative salaries that were paid for in part with taxpayer money. So the Patriot News and reporter Jan Murphy had to launch an extended legal battle to get that information. It took five years, but in the end, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled those salaries were public under the open records law. Okay, that was in 2008. You know where I'm going with this. Three years later, a young reporter fresh out of Carnegie uncovered a crime that would shake her university to its core. Sarah Gannon broke the Sandusky story months before it flooded the national headlines. We threw all of our resources behind her work in spite of disbelief and anger coming from many corners of Nittany Nation, including in my newsroom. And I'll tell you, I can tell you about the ire and actual rage that I heard. I took a lot of those calls. But Sarah won us a Pulitzer at the ripe old age of 23 for exposing what was called one of the biggest scandals in sports history. As she's told many students on this campus, the heart of that story wasn't about football. It was about the young boys who were victimized by Jerry Sandusky as long as he was free to roam. That was a story worth, worth fighting for again and again, despite obstacles. While we got an immense amount of pushback from the public, I am very happy to stand here today and say there are people in this room that personally called to encourage us to continue the fight, to continue the reporting. The alums, the journalism faculty at Penn State here at Main Campus. This alumni society, in fact, honored Sarah just one year after that story broke uh, for her work. That speaks volumes to your unflinching support of journalism that rights wrongs no matter the cost. And what a strong message to send to your students about the importance of speaking truth, the power, no matter the outcome. Today, the work of the Belisario is more crucial than ever. I don't have to tell you that America is headed for yet another incredibly contentious election year. We need your journalists to help serve as our nation's trusted eyes and ears. We need that new generation of watchdogs. So I do say to you, please keep up the good work, and thank you so much. It's a special day for me.